With us today is the Honorable Francis Cosgrove, Senior Judge, Philadelphia Municipal Court. Judge Cosgrove, it's a pleasure and thank you for being here and participating in this project as we preserve the rich history of the Philadelphia Municipal Court. Now, you uh, served on the Municipal Court for a, a lengthy period of time, but before we get to that, let's go back to your beginnings. Why don't you tell us where you were born, tell us about your parents, your siblings, and where you went to school. Okay, uh, I was born in Philadelphia, raised in Philadelphia, went to school in Philadelphia. <clears throat> I went to a school called St. Veronica's Academy. Mm -hmm. Well, we called the St. Veronica's Academy, but it was just St. Veronica's parochial school. In those days, all the parishes had their own schools. From there, I went to Northeast Catholic High School for boys. And then, oh, and then I went into service. I went under the GI Bill. I went to LaSalle College and uh, took some time off and went back to uh, Temple Law School. So your parents, um, who were they? I had two parents, uh, we all do. <laughs> uh, Francis was my father, and my mother's name was Catherine. My father said he was Irish descent, and my mother was Polish. Actually, she was first generation uh, American because her parents came from Ireland. And it, it was rather interesting because I had a gran grandmother from Ireland who was born on a boat coming from Ireland Wow. The boat landed in Philadelphia. They took her up to uh, St. Malachy's Church in uh, North Philly, 11th and Master. Mm -hmm. And when I got married, you had to get a uh, baptismal certificate. So I went to St. Malachy's, and the priest there says, you know, we've got another conscript on record here. And he gave me her baptismal certificate. <laughs> so, and so the, she was baptized there, and so was I. That's and, wonderful. And my parents, they kept moving north, uh, you know, as they progressed. Uh, we went to, from St. Malachy's to St. Edward's, from St. Edward's to St. Veronica's. And my mother used to think that uh, Hunting Park was the suburbs, <laughs> eighth in the boulevard. So uh, my father, he worked all during the Depression. and we were, but he worked nights, and I seldom saw him. That's, I mean, that's life in the big city. Right, right. I had, I had two brothers. Uh, John was in the middle. Jim was the youngest. John's passed on. He, he died from, believe it or not, skin cancer. Wow. And my brother Jim, he, he owns a bar and restaurant and motel up in Lancaster County. He's, okay. he's my successful brother. <laughs> <laughs> he's, worth, he's worth a few dollars. And so uh, where did you go to high school? North Catholic. Okay. And, and, we, and did you have any uh, activities that you participated in at North Catholic? <clears throat> at North Catholic, we had a teacher, English teacher, who was in charge of the shows. And if you're in his class, you ended up in the chorus. So I can remember I was in the chorus of my sister Eileen, and I was an English soldier. I had an English soldier's costume on, and one of my one of my jobs was to jump up onto a rock during the show. So I jumped up up on the rock and I split the seam of my pants. And <laughs> I never over. I had a heck of a job overcoming that. <laughs> and then during my junior and senior year, I rode on the crew. It was in my junior year, I was on the junior varsity. We rode in the, uh, my junior year, the, um, the national school boys were in Philadelphia. Oh, wow. So we rode and we come in second. So we said, uh, second. Six months later, the coach gives us medals for that race, saying that the winners of that race who come in first were a varsity that had been disqualified the day before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they snuck them into our race. So eventually like, we got the medals, and we didn't, we didn't get many more at North Catholic. <laughs> okay. So you graduate from North Catholic, where'd you go to college? Well, no, you said you went into the service. Yeah. What, what branch? 
Actually, I went to the South for a little while. Okay. And then I got drafted into the Army in 51 to 53, and I served stateside. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't go overseas. It was during the Korean War. Every, every month, a levy would come down from Washington, I guess, saying so many people from the battalion have to go to Korea. So one time, I was sent to a clerk type of school. So when you went to such school, they didn't bother you. And then when I got back, I became the company clerk. <laughs> I had lots of friends. <laughs> and then, <clears throat> and then uh, the Mississippi came up. And they took the battalion over to the Mississippi. And we stayed in front of the, 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 um, what, the what the hell they call it? I forget. And it was the high, the high, uh, high tide. Right. So we would be piling sandbags here and then move them. By the time we got back to our base, we had less than nine months to serve. Oh, okay. So if you had less than nine months to serve, they didn't send you overseas. So the unit I was in was a Colorado National Guard outfit that we had been sent to fill in to meet the um, mandatory requirements for uh, personnel. Okay. And then, so they shipped them home, and they shipped the rest of us to uh, Leonard Wood, Missouri, to become a training cadre, believe it or not. And uh, I ended up becoming this supply sergeant and then being discharged, not discharged, but terminated or whatever, whatever they called it. Okay. So the first thing I did was go and sign up for the GI Bill. <laughs> Understood. So, how far had you gone at, in, uh, at LaSalle before you were drafted? Uh, about, uh, it was not quite two years. Okay. Because it took me two years to get out of LaSalle on the GI Bill. When you came back? Yeah. Okay. What was your major in at LaSalle? Oh, uh, human relations. <laughs> okay. I thought that'd be a good job to have. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <clears throat> and, and after LaSalle, what did you do? <clears throat> well, when I was at <clears throat> when I was at LaSalle, after I got out of the service, I ended up working in construction work. I was a um, what the hell was I? I was a uh, uh oh. No, no, you're fine. Uh, <clears throat> I was a so tile setter's helper, and in, in those days, being a helper meant you you did a lot of work. And there was no mastic like there is today. That was all sand, cement, and lime. Mm, right. And uh, I became, I was elected secretary of the union, somehow. And, uh, and then eventually they negotiated a health and welfare fund, and I became the administrator. And uh, the uh, union lawyer says to me, how do you like this job? I said, I don't, I don't like it. It's in the afternoon, I have nothing to do. <laughs> he says, well, why don't you go to law school? Law school? I said, you're the only t lawyer I know. And in those days, you had to have a preceptor. He says, I'll be your preceptor. So I go up to uh, Temple, and I say, I want to go to you know, night school. And they say, well, you have to take this test. It's, it doesn't mean much. It's called a law school aptitude test. Don't worry about it. Nobody ever, nobody ever flunks it. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the test. They accepted me, and I became a Rule 7 student. I split my first year into two years okay. because I had been out of school for a couple of years. Right. And it's a good thing I did because uh, you, you have to have a certain grade point average to move up a year at a time. And after one year, my genius grade point average wasn't the best <laughs> but luckily in my second year I moved it up over the you know the required mm -hmm. number and, and once you got through the first year it got a little easier right so what was the union that you were uh, participating in uh, it was a tile helpers union it was part of right right now all those unions and those building trades the 
bricklayers, the plasters, the tile setters, the, they're all in the uh, bricklayers union now. Okay, so you were a tile setter. I was a tile setter's helper. <laughs> okay, for, for how long did you do that? Oh God. I did that even when I got a law, law, out of law school. I, I stayed on as administrator of the uh, welfare fund. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I, uh, when I got out of law school, nobody wanted to hire me. I can remember being interviewed by this one lawyer uh, from a big law firm. He was a named partner, mm -hmm. and he was a very nice man. He talked to me for about an hour, and at the conclusion of the interview, he says, "You know," he said, "Well, you're a nice man, but we can't use you here." He says, you, you know, you're not too bright. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you got too many kids and we can't afford to pay what you need to live on. Oh, goodness. So I can remember there, <laughs> there were others in the same boat. So we started a law firm. <laughs> so you uh, graduate from Temple, you pass the bar, right. and you, you're still, still an administrator. administrator for the union. Right. And, and, and then we're working, uh, there was, first there were t two others, and then uh, that busted up, and then I ended up being partner with uh, Judge Zaleski, and, uh, and who else was there? Steve Wojak, and uh, then there were two lawyers that wanted to put their name on the door. Mm -hmm. We had rented this place for $50 a month. Wow. <laughs> over on 15th Street, and the building was being torn down. That's why it was so cheap. So these two lawyers said, you know, you know we're, we're on our own, but we're going to go in partners. And so one of them was uh, Bob Coleman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, what the other guy? They both became named partners of the Morgan, uh, Franklin, Dennehy, and Warner. Oh, my goodness, yes. So, <laughs> so for five dollars a month they got their name on the door. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what sort of practice did you have? What <clears throat> cases were you doing? Um, I hate to say it, but whatever that came in the door, we bounced on it. No, I understand. <laughs> you knew. And then in 73, well in 71, the legislature in Harrisburg passed the bill giving all the counties in Pennsylvania more CP judgeships. Mm -hmm. And uh, Philadelphia got 30. So every war leader had a favorite, so they were all appointed. And Steve Wojak at that time was a uh, war leader in the Northeast. So Zaleski gets the appointment, right. and he's got to run again in 73. Between 71 and 73, there were 10 more openings on the CP court. Well, that's 40, 40 judges. Well, you wouldn't believe the size of the primary ballot. It was the whole I can imagine. The whole thing. And then there were four, four openings on the, uh, on the uh, municipal court. Okay. So uh, those seven judges on the wall there, they were judges when they formed the court. I mean, they were judges. They were uh, lawyers, right. and they were automatically on the court. You know, there's uh, Glancy and Dandridge and Simmons and, and Conroy, Murphy, Margiotti, and uh, what the hell, what's his name? Mm -hmm. <laughs> For some reason, I can't remember him. <laughs> but no, uh, and then um, and then they, they were the first wave. Right. The second in '73, there was. Uh, McCabe, Meckle, Blount, and myself. Oh, okay. We were endorsed, and we were, and then we became nominated. So we were on that ballot mm -hmm. <laughs> all the way over. It was unbelievable. It took up the entire ballot. I mean, the entire board was filled with names. And I think judges and these councilmen and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. And in those days. They had a, a city chairman who ran a tight ship, right? As, as opposed to what it's like today. So I'm told. I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, 
city chairman at that time was Peter Camille. Yes. He ran a tight ship. <laughs> and if you, yeah, so, um, and then we get on the court. <laughs> it's different than it is now. We, it, in those days, we had jurisdiction over misdemeanors, too, and a couple other things. And we were down the roundhouse on the preliminary, uh, uh, preliminary, what they call it? Arraignments. Arraignments, preliminary arraignments. See, well, see how you forget? Yes. So, so in any event, uh, and the, and when the, there was a judge, a magistrate named Marker, and when Marker, he was the last one. That's right. And when he when he retired, we became an independent court. Up until then, the president judge of the Common Pleas Court was really the administrative judge of the municipal court. I didn't know that. You know, Glancy was there in uh, name only. <laughs> okay. And I think uh, who was uh, Eddie uh, Eddie Bradley. <laughs> he was he was the boss. Yeah, Bradley, yes. So Glancy was so glad to get rid of Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> so and we became independent and Glancy did a great job for the court because when we started, I think our salary was in the twenties. And wow. and Glancy brought it all the way up to be close to the common plea. Right. Right. And I don't know where it is now. <laughs> Oh God! So you you're elected to the municipal court, and you know, t tell us about your experience and your tenure on on the municipal court. Uh, well, Judge Glancy ran a good court, and uh, everybody did their share. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, for some reason, I got elected secretary of the board of judges. That's because I was secretary of the union <laughs> at one time. Okay. So, <clears throat> and I, I was secretary for a long time. And, and, and then one part that was interesting was when you appealed from municipal court to common pleas, common pleas judges really didn't like that job. Right. So they ended up sitting on somebody's desk for longer periods of time than they should have. But in any event, they cut. Well, after I became a senior judge, I don't, yeah, uh, the municipal court was given the appeals from the court. So how would you do that if you're appealing from the same court? Two judges from the municipal court were certified as CP judges. Right. So Judge King and I were certified. Well, before that, you had Bla um, Silverstein certified, and and then, but when he, Silverstein then stepped down, I think the Supreme Court put an administrative judge in to help him out. Okay. And that was Judge Blasey. Right. So Judge Blasey uh, had Judge King and I certified, and then Judge. Bla we worked uh, two days a week. Two days I, I took uh, the, the uh, appeals from, uh, from landlord tenant. Okay. Oh, no, no, King had landlord tenant. I took the appeals from civil. Okay. And uh, I forget who got, the, who got the criminal. But in any event, we, Judge King and I, really brought it, uh, brought it in the in the line because before that they had the contingencies you never know when you're going to hear the case right so we were hearing them within 60 days and judge uh, Heron was the administrative judge of the CP all he ever did was pat us on the shoulders and say yeah, good job <laughs> so doing a good job <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> we held that we did that uh I King worked two days, I worked two days, and we saved Friday for jury trials. Okay. <laughs> the first time a lawyer gets something and says, this is a jury case, I said, what are you talking about? We don't think. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he says, well, you're in CP now, you're doing juries. <laughs> so, 
that the first jury trial after about 25 years never doing a jury trial. <laughs> but luckily, Judge Blaza gave us a law clerk who was really good. Uh, all the motions and all the... Okay. <laughs> and then the uh, jury, <laughs> jury instructions. It was, it was a really a great experience. And <laughs> and then you were on the court for how many years? I served as an active judge for uh, 24 years. Okay. And uh, I, I was up for retention, and I filed for retention. And then I was only going to be a judge a year, and I'd have to get off. No. So I talked to the city chairman and said, look, I'm leaving next year. Well, I'll leave a year early if it'll help you out. So uh, he said, well, we certainly appreciate it. <laughs> he certainly did because the fellow that took my place is named Frank Brady, <laughs> <laughs> brother of the yeah, city. Right. <laughs> but in any event, Frank's really a nice guy. No, he is. He is. And and he's a good, good judge he's too. A good judge. So did you go, go senior status? Yeah, after not right away. Maybe five, six months later, I was. They said, you know, do you want to be a senior judge? to lose because at that point in time my wife had died and I was kicking around and not knowing what I wanted to do so it was really a godsend and it, and then in those days if you're a senior you could stay on 10 years right so I went on at 70 and at 80 they said you have to leave <laughs> I really have to put my hands down here <laughs> <laughs> So, Judge, uh, with all of your experience and, and your tenure on the bench, if you were talking to a, a group of new judges, what advice would you give them? Oh, my advice would be, uh, don't talk to lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'd say just be, just be honest in everything you do on the court, because if you're not, it's... It's a terrible thing, mm -hmm. and we've seen examples of some of them. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But other than that, just, just be uh, and stay, stay on top of your cases. Because, oh, and remember, you're assigned to a courtroom, and it's your courtroom, but you have certain obligations. You know, don't feel that you can wander in any time you feel like it. You're scheduled for 9.30, open at 9.30. And, you know, and, and don't take time off for personal items. Just do your job and things will go all right. And then uh, I can remember some of the cases I had. Uh, I can remember I had one case with the, uh, the mafiosos from downtown. And there must have been 10 of them. It took us all morning just to straighten out the lawyers. <laughs> so we break for lunch, come back from lunch, and the lawyers and the DA says, Your Honor, we spent the morning getting straight on the judges, but we're not going to go to trial here. The, f the federal government is going to take over. Oh, okay. <laughs> they took it over. Which was <clears throat> Another one of my favorites was the MOVE group. You ever hear of the MOVE yes. group? <laughs> Boy, they could really disrupt the courtroom. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, uh, and then I had another case, <clears throat> an exotic dancer named Honeysuckle Divine. <laughs> she was quite a lady, and she was in. A, oh, let's forget her. <laughs> the, ca the case went up on appeal, and it was heard by one of our female uh, CP judges who really blasted me on her uh, decision. Oh, really? Uh, she, I said, you know, why did you have to mention my name? <laughs> right. My name's in the uh, in the decision. She could just said the judge below or something like right. that. So she says, I, that's the way I feel about this case. <laughs> but, oh, well. Uh, oh, God. So uh, what else can I say about the court? Those... Uh, the, the, the years that you served were, you know, some 
interesting years, and, and the court went through quite a few changes. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can remember. I even ran for president judge one time. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Silverstein was on. He was, uh, he was elected. I only got five votes, but uh, at least I had five friends. That's right. Well, Judge, thank you so much for coming in and participating in this. Yes, that wonderful history is... Uh, I'm so just getting started. <laughs>